Hi, I'm Scott Ferguson with Light Reading. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2018, and we're talking with Kelly Ahuja. He is the CEO of Versa Networks. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Uh, you talked with Light Reading last year. Um, so what's kind of changed uh, for Versa from 2017 to 2018? Where are we right now? Well, <laughs> it's been a great year. Uh, we blew out our expectations uh, on the business front. Uh, we've grown 2x in terms of size of the company. Uh, we moved to new offices. Uh, we've had lots of customer success, significant traction and service provider. We added uh, customers like Comcast, KDDI, Singtel, China Telecom Global, and many more. Uh, we're well over 40 to 50 service providers now globally that are using our products. In addition, we're not only just winning service providers, we're actually working with them to help them win accounts in, in their markets. And lastly, um, we talked about Capital One, which was a great thing last year for us, uh, late last year. We've got more customers like Capital One that are also working with us directly, enterprises. Wonderful. So you mentioned a lot about the communication service providers and how they're partnering with you and they're your customers. How is SD-WAN changing the market for them? Is there opportunity for them in there or is that taking actually revenue away from them? How do, how do you see that playing out? Sure. Now early on, you know, when SD-WAN first came around, um, service providers, CSPs, viewed SD-WAN as kind of cannibalizing MPLS. Now, what I've seen is a significant change in their mindset because what they're realizing is SD-WAN isn't really cannibalizing MPLS, it's actually enhancing MPLS. What we're doing is we're actually taking MPLS into the digital era. Uh, in the multi-cloud world, in the SaaS world, MPLS has to remain and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. But MPLS becomes a critical part of the solution for a service provider to be able to attach to themselves to this digital transformation that the enterprises are doing. The enterprises can use MPLS along with broadband and service providers can provide a connection between the two and intelligence across those two networks to be able to get the traffic to the cloud environments. Now we're at Mobile World Congress, so we have to talk about 5G, but <laughs> how does your company work to get your partners there and where does the SD-WAN part of that uh, come in? As, as you said, if we're software defining the network, how does that kind of all work together? Well, actually it's really interesting because you know it's all about 5G here at Mobile Congress. It's here in IoT and there's a lot of cars around, right? Uh, but leaving that aside, what's really interesting is that for us as a company, SD-WAN is fundamentally one part of the solution that we've built, but the bigger story is that we've actually software-defined everything. Software-defined networking and software-defined security. Now, as you look at the 5G world, you know, it's a lot about uh, distribution of the mobile network closer to the edges, mobile edge computing, and fundamentally the principles of what we built in our software platform, which is cloud-native, multi-tenant, does everything from layer three to layer seven, which is software-defined. It actually, uh, it, it fits the 5G world really well. Why? Because you can take that same software and spread it out across multiple geographies into a mobile edge computing environment and connect those mobile edge computing environments with internet, security, as well as private networks all combined together. And with our uh, UCPE type implementation, you can also host third party BNFs on top of our software. So it becomes kind of a, a platform, a software platform that you can use even for 5G and IoT. Wonderful, Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you, Scott.